Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. This is Mark the Messenger. We're back in our video. This one's about seven signs you may have a demon. I made a video in the past talking about seven signs that someone is a demon in their life, but this one's gonna be about signs that you may have a demon. And I'm gonna be speaking of my experiences because before I started making YouTube videos about God and Jesus and the Bible, I had a lot of demons that I had to fight. So I'm gonna be sharing the stuff that I went through and also some biblical stuff too as well. If you guys like the content, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Number one is gonna be deep, man, it's so true. And a lot of people are so unaware of spiritual warfare, they don't believe in it because no one really teaches this stuff. That's why it's important to have a personal relationship with God and Jesus Christ so he can give you the spiritual understanding, the spiritual wisdom to understand what's really taking place in our lives, okay? So number one is whenever you give up a sin, the water turns on. No way. Oh guys, so as I was making this video, something went down with my water pipe. So I already know the devil does not want me to make this video. So let's get it, let's get it, okay? So. Whenever you give up a sin, you're going to get a demonic attack. And not just not just a regular attack. I'm talking about a strong attack because that demon that you were um, that you had in you, whether you open the door, whether it was a generational curse that you're breaking, uh, whether it's, you know, your disobedience, uh, you sow into your flesh was corruption. So whatever door that you open to have that demon in you, the witchcraft, all that type of stuff. Right. Whenever you try to leave that life of sin, whenever you try to give up that thing, that door you open, you want to close it, you want to close that door, you want to get rid of that demon, that demon is going to attack. Okay, I'm gonna speak through my experiences, my testimony. Whenever I had a weed addiction, and every time I try, notice every time I try to stop, I will get headaches, I will get strong withdrawals. And I'm not just talking about like any type of headache. I will get a headache for three hours, literally that felt like a demon was pounding my head with a hammer. Because that's exactly what it was what was happening. Okay, so whenever you want to give up a sin and you notice that the crazy things are happening, that demon does not want to leave your vessel. Okay, remember what, what did Jesus Christ did when he cast that demon out of, that, out of that person? The demon went to the pig, okay? And, the, and the, the, the pig is a symbolism of being unclean, okay? So, which, oh, I'm, going, I'm speaking too fast. I'm speaking too fast because that's going to be number four. I'm speaking too fast, okay? So, always notice this, guys. Whenever a sin you're giving up, I mean, I could list all the sins. We know what it is, okay? Especially you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict you of what you're doing wrong. Whenever you want to give that up, okay? Or whenever you like, you know, you know, you start praying to God. You start, you know, because the devil sees when you try to go closer to God. That's when he's going to turn up. That demon is going to attack you, bro. But don't be scared. Don't be fearful. Uh, God does not give us a spirit of fear. He gives us a spirit of love, power, and sound mind. And when you're getting demonically attacked, you got to attack if the demon back. Attack the devil back with the word of God, because that's how Jesus overcame Satan. He he had a fall back saying with the word of God. So read your Bible, study to show yourself approved. Okay, number two is self-destructive addictions. Okay, yes, yeah, self-destructive addictions. We all have our own vices, and this is how you know it's something that that's a demon in you. Okay, a demon that's using your vessel. Remember, well, I'm speaking too fast. I gotta let me slow down. Okay, so whenever you know that something that's self-destructive and you know, you know, you don't want to do it no more. You know that you want to walk away. God's convicted you and you had the strength to, you know, to give it up. To, or it could be someone else, too, because the soul ties, that's real, too, you know. And you just keep on going back to it, you know. And because you notice that when you're not feeding that addiction, the demon gets mad and the demon's attacking you. So you don't know and you, you're not you're unaware of spiritual warfare. And you notice that whenever you go back to the thing that that's the destructive that it makes you give you that temporary pleasure that temporary dopamine and it makes you that that demon wants you to be the self destructive so the demon won't bother you when you're living a life of sin okay so always understand that when you have a self destructive addiction that is not you bro that's a demon using your vessel and it's causing you to stay stuck in sin it is causing you to stay stuck in darkness but best believe guys through the power of repentance godly godly sorrow work through repentance submitting yourself obeying god Okay, you'll be broke. You'll be because I I broke free from the demons. I, all the demons that I had in me, I broke free. I slayed them all. Okay, now sometimes you try to fight back, and this is a spiritual warfare. So we got to be fighting back every single day. It is a war against our soul. You got to always keep that in mind. They don't like I said. They don't teach us this, but Mark the Messenger, we're gonna teach you guys. We're gonna give you that a message. Number three is the sign. The number three sign that you have a demon is when you're self righteous and you're arrogant. Okay, arrogance and self righteous. Okay, so and also prideful. This is what the book of a pro oh actually i want to read the scripture with you guys um i forgot to read it this is important too this is in 1 peter chapter 5 verse 8 it says to be sober be vigilant because you're as uh, your enemy the devil as a worn lion walked about seeking who he may devour okay so it's not it's not only just drugs it could be lust and all that type of stuff okay so number three i want to read it. this is in the book of this is in the apocrypha okay so this is it says that for pride is the beginning of sin and he that have it 
shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord shall the Lord brought them up strange calamities and overthrew them. Okay, so it says pride is the beginning of sin. Who's the first person on this earth to operate in pride? The devil. Okay, so when you're operating in pride, self-righteousness, uh, the whole year now, you're, you feel like you're better than other people. You're arrogant. You feel like you can never fall. But the Bible says pride becomes a poor fall. So when you're operating in prideful, understand that Satan was the first one to operate in that spirit. So when you're operating in that spirit, what spirit is working through you? It ain't the spirit of God. That's a demon. All right. That's the devil himself. OK, so you don't want to be prideful and arrogant, have no love in your heart. You watch, you made this video this far. You don't want to hit the like button. You don't want to show your brother no love, even though, you know, I'm speaking biblical truth. We got to rebuke that type of spirit. OK, number four. This is the one I can't wait to talk about, guys, because this is real. Like I've seen this in other people. This is so real, bro. OK, so the number four sign you have, you may have a demon is when you have bad hygiene. A dirty environment, uncleanliness, okay? Now, let's talk about this before I go on with number four. A lot of Christians, especially like pastors, they tell you that, or people in general that are that pro profess to be Christians, they'll tell you that if you're a Christian, you can't have a demon. Um, you can't, you know, they say stuff like that, which is completely not true, okay? This is what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45, okay? I was baptized in 2025, and I was still battling demons, okay? It wasn't until 2000, 2000, the end of 2018 when I fully surrendered and I gave up all, anything that's opening any doors, okay? But I had to put in my faith, produce works to give up those demons, okay? So it says, when an unclean spirit gone out of a man, he walked through dry places seeking rest and find none. Then he said, I will return to the house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he find it empty, swept, and garnished. Then go he and take with himself seven other spirits more wicked than, he, than himself. And they enter in there and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall be into this wicked generation. Okay, so it says, when an unclean spirit, okay? So best believe when someone has unclean spirits in them, they're gonna, they're gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna, you're gonna see it through discernment, okay? The bad hygiene, they're gonna be smelling. Okay, I had, I had someone tell me, I'm not gonna say this person's name, and they had, they said they have a bad odor, and they went, they did surgery, they did everything they can, they spent thousands of dollars to try to get it out, and, and that person just couldn't get that smell away, and I was telling that person that, that's, it's a spirit that's causing that, and you, it's deliverance, okay, that's what it is, we need deliverance, that's what we have to be doing in these last days, guys, to be getting deliverance from these demonic spirits, and also these strong, strongholds, which I'm gonna talk about towards the end of this video. Okay, so bad hygiene, dirty environment. When you go to a person's house, guys, this is real, bro. I'm telling y'all, and it's it's super dirty. Now we all now, we don't have to be super clean, like OCD or anything like that. But when you go to the house, it, it's stinky, it's dirty. You got poop all over the place. Um, it's just come like dirty. You, you know, you know, like it's dirty. That's unclean spirits in that house. Okay, so if you if you're in that type of environment, start you know clean up your environment, clean your house because demons they can't dwell in a clean temple. They can only dwell in a dirty temple, okay? So always understand that they, the demons, they jump in the pig. The pig is one of the most dirtiest animals on earth, okay? So always understand that. Uncleanliness, okay? That's what the Bible calls it, which defiled too as well. So bad hygiene, dirty environment, yes. A Christian that's being disobedient, that's not following God, uh, that's opening doors. Now, we are under grace, but if you abuse grace, the demons could come and attack you. Send me more spirits. That's, what, that's not what Mark the messenger says. That's what Jesus Christ says himself. Seven other spirits will come back and it will be worse than you were in the, before, before those demons came. Okay, even so shall be into this wicked generation. Number five is occult practices and partaking in, in, in witchcraft, new age, okay? So this is in 1 Timothy chapter four, verse one and two. It says, now the spirits speak expressly that in the latter days, some shall depart from the faith Given heed to seducing spirits and doctrine to devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience smeared with a hot iron. A lot of this new age stuff you see being promoted, and best believe Satan is behind this being promoted. Uh, your crystals, your tarot cards, uh, Uji board readings, uh, palm, you know that palm stuff they do, the evil eye, all that is demonic. 100% it's all of darkness. And Satan disguises that self of the light, disguises himself as spiritual. That's why nowadays, guys, I don't even like to call myself spiritual, because, even though I am. But the people of this world who call them spiritual, it's the new age stuff. All this stuff opens demons. Okay, they're in darkness. 
especially if you're playing with tarot cards, all that is uh, witchcraft, okay? Also, when you're doing, um, let's say like, for instance, it's a generational curse, your family, like you're in families, like let's say maybe you haven't even done it, but your, your, your mom did it, your dad did it, or your sister and brother did it, now it came into you. It's all generational curses that we must break, okay? So always understand that if you're partaking in occult practices, y'all know what it is, Freemasonry and all that, okay? Uh, partaking in witchcraft, the new age type of stuff, you know, anything that's spirit, spiritual or spiritualism that's not linked to the Bible, that's not linked to God and, or Jesus, that's false, guys. Be very careful. The Bible even says doctrines of demons. That's all the new age stuff that gets promoted. That's what's cool. But if you talk about being spiritual, being led by the Holy Spirit, people are like, oh, that's weird or what? I, I, <laughs> you don't know how it is. People hate the truth. People hate the truth, but the truth is how you change. The truth is how you transform your life. People don't want to do that. That's just, that's just dangerous to them, to, to the, uh, the world, okay? Number six, the number six sign that you may have a demon. Actually, not you may, you do have a demon, okay? When you're scoffing, you're mocking, you're a blasphemer, and you're always angry and ar argumentative, okay? This is what the Bible says in the last days, and, and I believe that we are living in the last days. It says that knowing this first, that there shall come the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, okay? So anyone who's scoffing, mocking, even the Bible says a blasphemer, all sins could be forgiven, but he who blasphemed the Holy Spirit, shall, there's no forgiveness of that, okay? So that's demonic, bro. That is demonic. When you're laughing at people talking about God and Jesus, the Bible, or them calling themselves a Christian, you're laughing and stuff like that. That is a demon using you, bro, okay? Demons like to mock, they scoff, you know, they laugh, they laugh. And even though you're doing the right thing, even though you're on the narrow path, the path that leads to salvation, they're going to laugh at you and they're on the wrong path. And they're deceived. That's what demons do. They deceive people. Okay. And all, always angry and argumentative, always wanting to debate, always in drama and arguing. That is a demon, bro. That's not that person. Okay. It's a spirit. I always understand that. We are dealing and battling with spirits. We're not battling with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. All right. Number seven is self-harm and suicidal thoughts, okay? So whenever you start to get those thoughts, this is what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, okay? So when it comes, if you're getting self-harm and those suicidal thoughts, those are demonic strongholds in your mind. And you must fight against that through prayer and fasting, prayer and fasting. You can fast for 24 hours or however long you want, okay? Being obedient, because best believe, I used to deal with that too, those thoughts. And that, that wasn't me thinking, it was the demons. The demons, they want you to die. They want to destroy you. The devil comes to still come and destroy. The devil want, the, these devils and these demons, that's what they want to do in your life, okay? So always understand that. That's not you that wants to do this stuff. That's not you, bro, or sis. That's not you. This demons is demons, okay? And once you acknowledge that, you're going to look for solutions. That's probably why you're watching my video, okay? It's, it, it, this could be a sign, guys. This could be a sign itself that we got to do some fasting, some prayer, building up our spirit, getting close to the shepherd, Jesus Christ, building our relationship with God. This could be a sign. So these are the seven signs you may have a demon. Number one is whenever you give up a sin, you will get demonically attacked. Number two is self uh self-destructive addictions number three is self-righteousness arrogancy prideful number four is bad hygiene dirty environment and uncleanliness number five is occult practices and partaking in uh, witchcraft the new age stuff number six is scoffer marker blasphemer and always art angry and argumentative number seven is self-harm and suicidal thoughts i hope you guys got edified and learned a lot from this video if you have already make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel i make content every single day i love you guys so much god bless you all i'm out peace